Hello, my name is Jake Cole, and I'm the technology teacher at Harrisonville High School. I teach uh, several different classes in a pre-engineering program, preparing students for um, a major in engineering in college. Um, one of the co courses that we teach is called Engineering Design and Development. It is a senior level only class. Um, students have to have completed at least two other engineering courses before taking this course, and they have to be a senior to be in the class. The primary objective of the course is to solve a real world problem over the course of a year. So the students um, spend a good amount of the first uh, couple weeks just coming up with a problem, proving that it's really a problem over the course of the first semester through research, analyz analyzing, um, and doing polls, and a variety of different things. Um, then they start a design towards the end of the semester, and then second semester is all about um, a finished creating a real working prototype, testing it, retesting it, redesigning it to come up with a completed project. They then present their final project at a KC STEM Alliance hosted um, Show Me Showcase at Union Station in the end of April. Um, what you're going to be watching are the two uh, student groups that presented their projects this year. I've been teaching this class all, a little over 10 years. Um, and these are two of the best projects we've had in the course of those years. Um, I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. I'm Caleb Verstraight. I'm Nick Saffles. And I'm Andrew Bullock. And uh, this year we've been uh, creating and building the water sports rope reel. So after a water sports session, uh, there's always been the hassle of bringing your rope in. And so with this, you would put your empty spool on. Clip your rope, and then reel it in. Uh, and basically, uh, Nick, you go for the electronics. Okay, so to make our design, we knew that we needed something that could easily reel in the rope with the switch of a button and be able to control the speed. So what we ended up doing is using a what's called a potentiometer which is basically a dial to control the speed and a three-way switch to control the direction that the rope is reeling so that it can feed out and reel back in. So we put these together um, using a heat gun and um, soldering connections and connected it to a 12 volt battery for power. <clears throat> um, to test our product we took it out to a pond and um, took turns reeling in the rope manually using wrapping the rope around an arm like this and using our reel to reel in the rope. And we found that on average the, the reel took 14.3 seconds less than reeling in manually as well as causing less water on the user and less tangling with the rope. Our main existing competitors were Bearhead Landwinder, which was took a long time to wind it in, and it was very cheap. And our other one was the Rewinch, which is like a, a box that you that pulls you in if you attach it to something like a car wheel or a tree, and then, but that's very expensive, and. It can pull you up to 20 times. Okay. Okay, so once you have your reel, or your reel, your rope is out in the water, and it's behind the boat, and your, uh, your rider is in the boat, and you just have your rope out in the water, and you need to bring it in, you hook your reel, or you put your reel onto the, re or the water sports rope reel, and you pick your direction of which way it's going to come in and with the water resistance out of the boat you pick your speed and you reel it in and then once you're done you can take the spool off and have easy storage into a compartment and it won't get tangled and you can easily take it back out once you're ready to ride again we've used a DeWalt battery to power our handle guide and uh, other handle with our ball bearing in it was all 3D printed. Oh, gotcha. 
the box, variable speed controller, switch, and our motor was all either ordered off of Amazon or Vex Robotics. So we picked this box because of the lashes and we have our O-ring type seal and it's completely waterproof. And then where we drilled into the box to attach our handle uh, and guide and also our wires for power, we either put our rubber seal on this side or we siliconed on any of the parts coming out of the box. So when I was a little kid at the lake all the time, um, we always had this problem and since all the adults were, uh, you know, either helping the rider out or doing something else, it was always our job to bring in the rope. And so my brother and his friend and me kind of came up with this idea of, you know, could we just make this super easy compatible thing for all ropes to bring it in super fast. And in the beginning, they were thinking about like attaching it to the boat. And so you could flip a switch on like your dashboard and bring it in with just a switch, well, flip a switch. But with this, it's easily stored and um, it's not in the way. Hi, I'm Isaac Chiedini. Hi, I'm Jace Reynolds. We redesigned the Harrisville High School parking lot for our engineering class called Engineering Design and Development. It's a senior capstone course that we completed as a part of the PLTW program. Jace will start us off talking about um, pedestrian safety and speed drainage. And, and speed. drainage in okay. the parking lot. So our biggest concern was safety throughout this process anyway. All right, so for our safety concerns, we took a survey and sent it out to all student and faculty in the building and we got 127 valid responses. And with that, almost the majority said that the flow and congestion in the parking lot is really bad, so we wanted to get rid of that. And then with the congestion, brings in safety concerns. So we did a speed test in our parking lot, and with the way it was set up before, it had two long strips going all the way down it. And so we took a sports car, minivan, and a cruiser and on a closed course and uh, see how fast we go in the parking lot. Because with two cars total in the past year, we had to kind of change that, per se. So we could get our cars up, on average, to 45 miles per hour. So with our new design, the parking, um, the parking rows kind of go every other. So one, and I don't even know how to explain it. Split arrangement? Yeah, split arrangement kind of deal. So now the max speed that we can get is about 11 miles per hour, which with 11, you can't, total, you can't really total a car. So it's a little bit different. Then we also added in crosswalks, so walking through the parking lot is much more safe. We added in walkways in between all the rows for students to walk safely through the parking lot and not have to look for cars and cars to have to look for them. What else? The crosswalk right in front of the building, we added this in right here so kids can safely walk out to their cars and to the rows. What else did we do for safety? Then we just added a bunch of signage, yield signs, stop signs. Um, then in our parking lot, it's also both direction, so it's it's a two-way and in between. So we use Civil 3D, um, a popular civil program, to redesign our parking lot. Um, we took our design on a map and laid over it with a new design with parking rows, uh, stalls that are at 90 degrees as opposed to our previous design where it was 45 degree angles, which made it easier to park and easier to pull out, but um, also really easy to pull out really fast and hit people, which is one of the reasons that we tried to limit that. So with our um, stalls at 90 degrees and in staggered rows, <clears throat> it makes it really hard for people to speed, um, and it makes them actually look twice before they pull out of their parking spot. Forces them to pay attention. Yeah, um, and so we spread out the parking lot and also took part of the land by the baseball fields and on the back property. Um, and expanded the amount of spots so that we would meet code requirements. Um, we also expanded the amount of uh, disability parking spots um, and also added in this back little drive. Um, and we plan on putting temporary speed bumps on it so that in the event of snow or a big event, we can remove them at a moment's notice. Um, but they're primarily there to just slow down um, drivers in the morning and afternoons. Um, and it also allows us to fill it up uh, kind of in the style of, uh, I kind of like to think of it like a cup when you're filling it with water. So we fill from the bottom first and go up. So then in the mornings, whenever you enter the building, you don't have to go across a lane of speeding traffic 
and in the afternoon you also don't have to cross the middle where there's a ton of people trying to get out. Um, which also separates the bus drive lane and some of the staff parking as well. So it's a completely separate system. Um, yeah, so we met codes with that. Uh, we added more spots, added a new drive, uh, speed bumps, stop signs, that kind of thing. Uh, separated traffic from the buses and drivers. Uh, and we used a few solutions like Liberty North High School um, as inspiration because at Liberty North they have an outside drive and then they have a bunch of different lots together. Um, and there's sections so that it makes it hard to have a constant path to speed through and get out, um, which does slow down drivers, but makes it easier to dismiss everybody. And much safer. Yeah, very safe. Um, so yeah, that's our project. We redesigned the Hearsonville High School parking lot. We hope you like it. Um, if you have any questions, contact Mr. Cole.